Welcome to North Suburban Library District's Computer for Beginner Beginners class, also known as the Basic Computers class. This is our digital version uh, of the uh, actual physical class we normally teach, but because of the uh, COVID pandemic, we're unable to really have uh, physical classes to, to keep everyone safe. So we're, uh, we're adding this to our website, uh, to our YouTube channel, so that uh, at least uh, people that want to learn the basics about computers can have a, a, a beginning stage, a beginning, a beginning at uh, learning it. Um, you can come into our library and access this program, or you can access it from your laptop or from your phone. Um, the, the class is geared toward teaching you to use the, the computers that are, that are in our library. They're desktop computers, but many of the basics of the class are also applicable to your laptop uh, computer. Uh, if you do come into our uh, library and uh, decide to access this class, um, at some point uh, as you're practicing, after you've seen the course, you can always ask a librarian to come over and perhaps remind you of a few steps, and then, uh, then you can continue practicing on your own. So begin, before I really begin the class, I really wanna emphasize that uh, after you take the class, practice is a wonderful thing. And the more you practice, uh, the more you retain uh, what, you, what you learn. My name is Bill. I'm a librarian in North Suburban Library Districts, uh, Love Park, Loves Park Branch, as well as the Roscoe Branch. So let's begin. Uh, let's begin the class, basic computer class. And this is th these are the things we're going to discuss in the class, things that you're going to learn about. Um, you can read them and see them on the screen, parts of the computer, the mouse, the desktop. Uh, Microsoft Word is a very useful software program that people use to write on and it's wonderful to have you can uh, use it to write letters uh, resumes um, stories things like that we'll also show you what the keyboard looks like what the important keys are the keyboard that computers use whether they're desktop computers or whether they're laptop computers is very very similar to the keyboard that are used on uh, typewriters, whether they're electric or manual. So you may, you may feel some familiarity uh, when you use the computer's keyboard. We'll show you how to save a file, we'll show you how to open a file, and we'll show you how to print. These are some of the things that people most often wanna do with our, with our computers. At our Loves Park location, we have 32 public access computers. Uh, many people find these computers useful because uh, some people don't own computers, some people's computers aren't working, some people's printers aren't working. So we maintain our computers, we maintain our, our printers, and we also always have a, a supply of paper. So, so this is what we're going to discuss. And as I said before, everything in the class pertains to the desktop computers that we're using at our two locations. So here's uh, some snapshots of, uh, the, of the computers uh, currently at, at use at both our locations. Uh, there's uh, the computer itself, the personal computer itself has uh, shrunken a lot over the years. Uh, the leftmost top one is the actual heart of the computer. Uh, the, uh, the right top is the keyboard. The bottom right is the mouse and the left top is the monitor or the screen. So here's a close-up look at uh, part of the of the of the desktop computer. Uh, we're focusing on here uh, what they call USB ports. So different devices can access can be plugged in to your computer, and they they use these what they call universal serial bus uh, uh, access points. They come in slightly different sizes, but at the library we have at our library locations, we have, we have adapters that we can adapt uh, your device so that it can be plugged into computers. So cameras can be plugged into computers uh, to uh, save photos, to print photos, to, to, um, to save photos. So the, in the laptop, the laptop we show on the upper right, that also has the USB ports 
you can plug keyboards into these, uh, you can plug mouses into these. So th this is a way to standardize the devices that can be plugged in to a computer. So now we're gonna discuss moving the little mouse. As you, you can see on the screen, uh, the mouse is designed to be moved. And as you move the mouse, it has an effect on the computer screen. The computer uh, moving the mouse tells the computer what part of the screen you want to access. And there's always gonna be information on the screen. And the screen is divided up into thousands of uh, little pixels uh, into, a, into a, a larger grid. And so wherever your, um, your little uh, arrow lands, that will tell the computer what you want to do. So using the mouse, uh, which is more than a 20 year old uh, instrument is very useful in, in, in people uh, communicating with the computer and letting the computer know what the person wants to do. That is an example of what we call left clicking. The mouse is divided on its upper part into three parts. And today we're only gonna discuss for simplicity's sake, we're gonna discuss what we call the left click. And the left click is, prim is primarily solely what we're gonna do in our lesson today, what we're gonna discuss in our lesson. It's also really primarily what most people use. And it also communicates to the computer uh, a command that you, that you want to do. Now, double click, uh, unfortunately in this, uh, in this image, we're not seeing the person's finger uh, tap the left side of the mouse twice. The, uh, all you have to do is position your, for, your forefinger over whether you're right or left-handed, it makes no difference, over the left side of the mouse and tap it twice. And that also, uh, in, uh, that also gives the computer uh, commands. Uh, sometimes some commands require, require a single click. Sometimes some commands require a double click. And this leads us to uh, a concept that, any, that all users of the computer, whether they're beginners or whether they're advanced, there's all, always some experimentation using the computer. Um, as you go along, it's like driving, you get better and better at what you do. And uh, by experimenting, you learn when you may need to use a single click or a double click or a variety of other things. But part of using a computer is not being intimidated by experimenting. You're not gonna break the computer. You're not gonna erase anything. You're not gonna hurt anything. So never be afraid to experiment with, with your computer. We uh, have used in our physical classes what we call uh, a mouse practice. Um, as, I, as we've seen before, the mouse is the device used to communicate with the computer. And as you use it uh, more and more, uh, you develop greater and greater dexterity. It's really similar to playing a musical instrument. The more you practice, the more your fingers become much, much better at, uh, at, at using the mouse. At first you feel maybe a little clumsy, you feel a little awkward, but with more practice, very quickly it becomes second nature. At, at the Palm Beach Library, uh, from where this uh, image is from, they have games there that can help you uh, practice using your mouse. At the end of, the, uh, th at the end of this uh, lesson, we'll, we'll discuss how you can access uh, that particular library's uh, practice games so that you can really uh, become more comfortable using the mouse. This game here lets you move pieces in which you're playing a computer. And uh, so you'll move the, the red, the red uh, checker pieces around the board and a computer will play you at the game of checkers. And it's a kind of a fun way to get used to using the mouse and also to, to uh, have fun practice using the computer. Um, now, we're going to be opening shortly uh, the software called, uh, the software called uh, Word. 
And in the upper corners of Word are these symbols. And we're going to learn using these symbols how to uh, shrink pages and expand pages. So the upper row uh, of symbols, and these will always appear in the upper right hand corner of, of the screen. And I just want to I just want to caution you that when you first start using the computer, there's an awful lot of information on the screen. And knowing where to look for the information is really uh, the name of the game. That's where you start really feeling comfortable knowing where to look for the information you're seeking. So these particular commands help you shrink or expand or, or minimize or exit uh, the page that you're on. That was one of, that's one of the achievements um, in creating the, a personal computer is using graphics to help people understand and communicate with the computer. Graphics people understand, uh, graphics people can remember, people don't need to type in long commands. They can just click using their mouse on areas of the, of the screen that will give the computer commands. So the minus signs shrink this, the, the particular window on, that you're looking at down to uh, an invisible size that you, that you can still access. Uh, the square on top will expand the, the window to its maximum size. So it fills the screen. Uh, the X, which we're, we're not gonna hit, uh, that will exit and get rid of the screen. Uh, the two squares uh, we see in the middle of the, of the second row, that's for making your window smaller, but it's still visible. And that's very useful. Uh, you're able uh, to, on, on Windows and Apple computers to have one screen up, more than one screen up at a time. So this is uh, the, the desktop as it appears uh, on our computers at are, are both locations and it's called a desktop. It's, uh, it's, it was created to look like uh, a, a desktop that a person may find in their office. Uh, it's, uh, it kind of reminds you of the green felt top and it's got, those are called icons on the left side. Each one is a particular type of software or each one uh, holds information. And then at the very bottom, uh, is that black ribbon, we call that the task bar. And there you'll see uh, which windows you have open and you also have a place to uh, give the computer different commands. So I've outlined here in red, the task bar. And uh, so if we were at the Palm Beach uh, mouse tutorial website and we had minimized that particular lesson, it would still be visible on the desktop in terms of describing what it is, the mouse tutorial, uh, mouse tutorial. So now on the left side is the start, is the start menu. And this enables you to open up software and enables you to find files, uh, enables you to find files. It does all kinds of things. It, on the newer computers we have in our library locations, it also appears on a button on the keyboard. And it also looks exactly like this. It looks like four small squares. And all you have to do is tap that, uh, either left click on the start menu there, or tap on the button on the keyboard. And what opens up is uh, another little window. Inside that window, is all sorts of places that you can go and you can use. So for example, um, uh, if you wanted to go online under the word browsers, there's, there's two ways that you can access the World Wide Web that you can access the internet. One is through Google Chrome and the other is through Internet Explorer. All you have to do is left click on either one of these and you will be online. On the second row, we have uh, Mike, we have some Microsoft Office products that are loaded onto our library computers. And one of the most popular is where it says uh, Word 2016. You see that the leftmost, the leftmost box. Um, you've also got volume control and a calculator that you can use. 
All these, all these require is that you left click, you put a little arrow that uh, will appear on the screen when your computer starts up and that you can control that arrow by moving your mouse around. All it requires to access any of these software is putting your arrow inside one of the boxes and left clicking one time. So for here, for example, we're outlining Word 2016. It's one of the most popular Microsoft uh, software programs, and it kind of mimics uh, typing on a piece of paper. It is how we use, how we create text, how you can write letters, how you can uh, customize what you've written. So if you were to left click on that particular software, uh, the word 2016, this is what would appear on your screen. It's the beginning, uh, it's the beginning of uh, using Microsoft Word. And it too mimics a piece, a, a typewriter page. That's why it's got the wider square there. It's meant to look like a typewriter page. You'll see in that white screen, you'll see like a little vertical, um, a little vertical line. That's also known as a, a cursor. It shows you where, when you begin typing, it shows you where your words will begin appearing. You can move that cursor around the page using your mouse. So you can begin at the top of the page where it is right now. You can begin in the middle of the page or at the bottom of the page. So this give you, gives you a lot of freedom to type what, what you want it to type and where you want to type it. Here's uh, another look at the keyboard. Uh, I'm using a keyboard just like this for this presentation. And as I said at the beginning, it's very, very similar to a, a typewriter keyboard, except there is there are some ex extras that, that are there. There, is, there are more keys because there's more things you can do with a computer than you can do with an electric or a manual typewriter. So here's our space bar. You've seen a space bar on a typewriter. All that does is that creates, space by tapping at one time, you move the cursor over one space to the right. Tapping it multiple times, you move that cursor, you create a larger and larger space between the last thing you typed and the next thing you're going to type. So it allows you to create spaces between your letters and your words. Now we've got the shift. There's two shift keys. And like the shift keys on a typewriter, by depressing either of these two keys and then tapping one of the letters, you can capitalize uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the letters. So if you held the shift key down and you typed in the letter Q, the capital Q would appear. If you released the shift key and typed Q again, the lowercase Q would appear. So you can capitalize or not capitalize what you want to type simply by using or not using the shift keys. Okay, we've come to probably one of the more important keys on the keyboard. This is the enter key. It has uh, two functions, at least two functions. One is to execute a command. So if you've given the computer uh, a command, you tap, just press down one time, enter, and that executes your command. It also has another function uh, in the Microsoft Word software in which it will send your cursor down to the next line. So if you wanted to, uh, you had finished a paragraph and you wanted to go down to the next space beneath your type typing, you'd hit that one time, it would take your cursor and where your typing would begin down one line. You can, tap, you can tap it more than one time. You can tap it two, three, four times, and it will take uh, the cursor down to a lower part of the page. And when you begin typing, that's where your words will appear. The, the, the key, enter key is also very useful. I mentioned before, double clicking. And one of the biggest problems that people have as they're learning to use the computer is a double clicking. Uh, don't ask me why, it's just a matter of learning 
a little bit of dexterity, but often when people ask them to double left click, they tap and tap and they, they don't quite get it right. So there's a fix, a workaround for the days that you're having trouble double clicking. All you have to do is left click one time and then tap your enter key one time. And that functions as a double click. So for, for those of us like myself, some days in which your double left click isn't working, just click left click one time and then tap your enter key one time. And that will suffice to be uh, as if you double left clicked. Okay, here's our uh, another key escape. So often uh, you'll uh, a page will fill the screen and you can't see a way to get out of that page. Well, you just tap this escape key one time and it will shrink uh, the, the window that's in front of you down to a smaller size or it will make it shrink down all the way down to the taskbar. So the escape key is very useful for leaving windows. You're not deleting the window, you're just getting out of the window. Uh, caps lock is also useful uh, for if you need to, to type a bunch of capital uppercase letters in a row, you just depress the cap lock one time. And then as you type, all everything you type will be in uppercase. And so uh, the only thing you have to remember is uh, that if you begin, if you don't want to type in the uppercase and you have to remember to tap the caps lock key one more time, and that takes the caps lock off. So sometimes somebody's depressed before you got there, the caps lock key, and you'll think to yourself, I don't know why everything's capitalized. So just tap the, the uh, tap caps lock one time and you'll be back to uh, typing in lowercase. Okay, we're gonna focus a little bit on uh, some of the things we can do with a Microsoft Word document. So we've used this uh, as a kind of an experiment, kind of like a, a default or just a general sentence. That's a simple sentence. I love my public library. It's got a capital I, it's got correctly spelled words and it ends in a period. And you can see that vertical line, the cursor, is uh, at the very end of the sentence. So wherever, you, whenever, wherever you stop typing, that's where the, where the cursor will will end up at. So if you're ever curious, like where where in the document am I? Uh, look for the cursor, and that'll tell you where in the document uh, you're at. You can leave the cursor where it's at, or using your mouse, you can move the cursor to a different location. So we're in the, uh, we're still looking at that sentence. Now I want to uh, let you know, mostly on the top we see file, home, insert, design. We're not gonna really talk about those today. We, we wanna keep this a uh, nice simple presentation, but they each have a, a purpose. Um, below that you can see, uh, Below the word home, you can see a word called Calibri. That's the style of font that uh, is, is appearing on the page. Uh, to the right of Calibri is a little uh, pointing down arrow. If you would put your, move your mouse and use your, and left click, put your arrow on that little uh, downward arrow, you can pick different style fonts. So you can uh, make the look of your typing completely different. Uh, next to that is the is a number 11. That's the size of the font. You can use that downward arrow to increase or decrease the size of your of your typing. So you can easily customize uh, what you're what you're what you're typing. So um, we're back to the keyboard because there's two more keys that are very useful. Uh, on the keyboard, they're the control key, and there's there's two of them. Uh, the, these keyboards are pretty. They're all on every computer. They're going to look basically the same, and the control key is very useful uh, for for a function we call either copying or pasting. Um, imagine if you've typed something that say is 500 words long, and you decide that the first 200 words 
should not be at the beginning of the of, of what you've written, but should be at the very bottom of what you've written. Well, if you didn't have a computer, uh, you'd have to retype that on a manual typewriter or electro typewriter. But one of the beauties of a computer, one of the beauties of a Microsoft Word software is you can move, you can move words, you can move sentences, you can move paragraphs, you can move pages around your your total document. So you are completely can move things around uh, with just a few keystrokes. You don't need to retype anything. You can just use a few keystrokes. And the control key is very key in, in that function. So the first thing we're going to talk about is copying and pasting. So what this is probably the simple, there's more than one way to copy and paste. But the simplest way to copy and paste is using the control key and the C key. To, to do this, you would have to uh, highlight the very first sentence of, of, you have to highlight the sentence that you want to move. Um, you would do this by putting your cursor at the beginning of what you want to move, holding the left click button down and sliding your mouse to the right. As you did so, uh, you would be highlighting or painting the sentence. The sentence would, would, would be black letters uh, on a white background, but it also have an overlay of gray or slightly different color. And this would tell you that the part that is highlighted is the part I'm going to copy. So to copy that, say you want to copy, I love my, you would highlight the I, the love, and the my, release your, release your left clicker. Then you would depress or hold down the control key. As we see here, hold that key down. And then you would tap one time the C key. And then you would put your, move your cursor where you wanted to place your new, that sentence, and you would tap, hold down the control key and tap the V key. And I love my would appear where you want it to be. So it's a simple process to highlight a word, a paragraph, then depress your control key, hold it down while you tap one time the C key. Then you would use your mouse and put your cursor where you want that sentence to be and hold the control key down and tap the V key. And that would replicate and add that sentence to where you wanted it to be. If you wanted to um, copy that sentence, but at the same time, delete it, you would hold your control key down and tap the letter X. You would have copied it, but then when you, when you hit control V and pasted it, the original sentence and its original place would disappear. So here's our keyboard again, and there's a, a, a arrow pointing to the left. In uh, more recent keyboards, uh, they've added the word backspace to the arrow. And this gets to be a important part of what you can do with a keyboard, which is deleting or erasing uh, parts of your text. Uh, if you know, you've typed something that uh, you don't like, if you want to erase it, uh, you can do one of two things. If you want to erase to the left of your cursor, you would just tap your backspace key and it would, it would go to the left, erasing everything to the left of your cursor. If you wanted to erase anything to the right of your cursor, you would tap or hold down your delete key, and this would erase text to the right of your cursor. So both keys are important. You just have to remember, do I want to delete to the left of my cursor or to the right of my cursor? And you can delete one word, one sentence, one paragraph, 
It all depends how many times you tap the key or how long you hold it down. So I love my library. I love my dog. Uh, this is practice for um, grammar. Now, when you, um, it's called spell and grammar check. So loves is an example of poor grammar. So you'll always see a blue weekly line under grammatical mistakes. Library is spelled incorrectly. So you will see a red squiggly line beneath the word library. So, uh, so just so you know, blue is for grammatical mistakes and red is for spelling mistakes. And by, um, by putting your cursor uh, on either of the two squiggles, right-clicking one time, a menu will appear and then you can choose the correct spelling or the correct grammar simply by clicking on one of the choices the computer offers you. So, and just so you know, uh, people, creative writers, will purposely uh, do things the computer thinks are either incorrect spelling or poor grammar. Uh, when you print out anything or email anything, these blue lines, these red lines do not appear. They're only for you, uh, for only for your viewpoint only. They're, they don't appear in printing. They don't appear in emails. So now another part of the page, this is called the scroll. This is called the scroll bar. And if you've got a long, a lot of text on the page, the scroll bar will be shorter. If you have little text on the page, like we do here, the scroll bar will be longer. But in either case, the purpose of the scroll bar is to allow you to quickly move up and down your, your page. So if your page was full of five paragraphs or six pages long, uh, all you'd have to do is put your cursor in the middle of the scroll bar, hold your left click down, and then slide your mouse down. And the scroll bar would move down and also your view of your pages would also move down. So you would move down through your document using the scroll bar. It's a very, very quick way to move down one page or multiple pages. So that's called the scroll bar. Now, one of the features, one of the good things about our computers is, is that it's, well, it's a double-edged sword is that when you're done typing something or doing some banking or whatever you're doing, once you log off, everything you did will disappear. Now, if you've written a long letter or an essay or a poem or a novel and you're ready to leave, you don't want to lose that. But unfortunately, when you log off, it will be disappear. So neither you nor anybody else can see it. So that's a negative. If you were doing some banking or uh, at the social security site or at some, you had some personal information that was on the computer, the positive thing is that everything you did when you log off will disappear. So it's got a pro and a con to it, but there's a workaround for protecting and saving what you, what you want. Uh, so what we have here are two examples of what we call flash drives. They're also known as thumb drives. They're small plastic uh, devices that uh, are, uh, they can hold quite a bit of memory. They can hold, some of them are large enough to hold uh, dozens and dozens of songs. They can hold multiple volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, they come in different sizes. The important things is you can use them to save what you've written uh, or what you have in the computer. So all you have to do is insert them into one of those USB ports that we discussed earlier. And uh, the, these flash drives will fit any USB port. So you gently, uh, and sometimes you have to, they don't, they, you know, sometimes they don't go in one way. So you just turn them around and rotate them 180 degrees and gently but firmly push them in the other way. So we can see how on the desktop computer they fit 
And on the left side and on the right side, we can see how they fit into a laptop computer. And you can use those to save what, what you've written. So what you do is to save what you've written, first you go to that little icon. It's uh, on, the up, on the upper left part of your Word document. Uh, we'll see on the, the bottom, it's the bottom image here is an icon that means save. What it is, is it looks like it really is a, a graphical design of an old fashioned, uh, what they used to call floppy disk. Um, but we don't use those anymore, but they've saved the graphic. So you put your cursor on that, cur on that graphic icon, left click one time, and another window will appear and it will have the window on top. And it's, you see info, you see protected document, you see new open. Well, we've circled, we've circled save. So you can either left click on save or you can left click on save as. And what this is doing is you're telling the computer, I want to save what's in my, on my window screen. And now I'm going to pick where I want to save it at. You have to, you always have to tell the computer what you want it to do. Well, you're not going to save it to the P, this PC because the PC is going to erase it. So you choose the word browse. And once you choose the word browse, it will offer, it offers you everything available to you. So in this, in this case, we're going to choose that flash drive. And flash drives uh, can be signified by a variety of different names. Our particular flash drives often have the brand name uh, on them. It's called the Kingston, uh, but it can, it, can, it can have different names. It can, it can have drive D or flash drive, but in this case, it's the word Kingston. So you left click on Kingston and you want to give your, your, what you're saving a file name because you're going to have a lot of different files eventually on your flash drive and you want to be able to find them. So you have to type in a name for the file that, that, you will, that you can use later to find it, something that describes what's on that file so you can find it. So you, you'll type that in. And then, so here's our word Kingston. It's easier to see here. You'll, you'll click on Kingston. You'll put in your file name, and then you'll type in the word save and saving will save whatever you've written if you've written one page if you've written 100 pages it will all be saved on that small flash drive and that's that's wonderful because you can remove that flash drive take it with you and and then use it uh, insert it in any computer uh, a computer at home computer at school another one of our computers at the library, a computer at another library, and that all that information is saved on that particular, on that particular device. Now, before we want to practice now recovering what, what's on that particular flash drives. So to do that, we're going to close out our window. So all you've got to do is uh, go to that red, that X that's, uh, highlighted in red and left click one time and that will close that window and that will take you back to your desktop and once again you'll click or tap on that on that windows start key and once again another window will pop up now uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to we've we've still kept the flash drive in the computer. Now you could remove it, put it back in again, but for the terms of, of practice, you can leave it in. But the question is, how do you recover what's on that flash drive? Well, you do the same thing on this computer at the library as you would on any computer. You would pick this PC because that will tell you what's on this PC, what devices are connected to your PC and your flash drive is considered a device. So you'd left click one time on this PC. And there another window would open up. And one of the things listed is Kingston E, which is the name of your flash drive. So 
By clicking on this PC, you've shown the devices that are attached, accessible to this computer. You would left click on Kingston E one time. And then another window would open up. And this is a window that's generated by what's in your flash drive. So your flash drive has a menu too. It's like going to a restaurant. You have to decide, what do I want to order? Well, the flash drive has its own menu that is a list of all the files saved on it. So you were, I think we, we I think our name for our writing was my file. You would left click on my file one time and your file would open up again. So if you had a one page, a letter to a loved one or a 200 page uh, novel or a 10 page class assignment, um, that would open up. You could print that, you could, you could work on it again. You could add to it, you could subtract from it. But the important thing is, you have you have you have taken with you uh, your document, and you can access that document from any computer. To log on to the computers, use your North Suburban Library District card, or other Illinois Public Library cards to log on to the computers. Those without a library card may receive a guest pass from the Reference Services desk. So when you do decide to log on, there you'll see. This, this floating around the screen, as soon as you touch the mouse, it stops moving. And all you've got to do, uh, this explains how many minutes you get. And uh, where it says on the lower left, click here to log on, you left click, you put your cursor, your little arrow in there and left click one time. Then another uh, screen will open up. It's a computer use policy to go, to actually get on the computer you have to accept our policy. So you would left click the word accept. Here's where you would take your library card or if you know it by heart, you would enter your barcode. Then you, you would enter in your personal identification number, your pin number, then you would left click okay, and you're in. Now, I wanna discuss uh, something. Supposing you come in and uh, the number that you remember, the pin number you remember, uh, isn't working. Maybe you don't remember it correctly. All you have to do is come up to the reference desk. The reference desk is very close to the 32 public computers and in Loves Park and the 10 uh, computers in Roscoe and tell the reference library in there, uh, I can't remember my pin number. If you present a photo ID, we will give you a new pin number and you can use that to get on your computer. So don't fret if your PIN number is not working, we'll get you a new PIN number. Now, we're going to backtrack a bit, and we're going to talk about uh, printing uh, something that you, pr printing a document or even uh, an image uh, that you like and that you want to take with you. So you would go back to that uh, Word file. In, you would open up your Word document would left click on the word file and then a window would open up and you would you would click on the word print and print would take you to this window and on this window there's a lot of you have a lot of choices uh you can decide uh the number, number of copies you want to you want to print you can decide uh if if you want to print it in color or black and white our computers default to black and white even if you send a color image to our black and white computer, it will print in black and white. So whereas under the word printer, you can select color printer and therefore your color image will be sent to our color printer and will come out in a beautiful color image. Um, you can, supposing you're at, uh, oh gosh, since there's so many, whether you're IRS documents or a job application documents, many times there's many pages. And supposing you wanna print just one of those pages, you can, under the word settings, you can, you can, you can select customize, and then you can select which page you want. So if you want to print page 25 of a 50 page document, 
you just put in two five. If you want to print out the first four pages, you would put into that pages field one dash four, and it would print out the first four pages. Our printers also offer the choice to print one sided or two sided. So they automatically default to one side, but you can also choose two sided. Uh, you can also choose orientation. There's uh, either a portrait, which is more of a vertical up and down uh, print, printing format, or you can choose, uh, you can choose uh, landscape. Um, so those, these are your choices here. On the right side, you'll see print preview and you can, it shows you what you're gonna print and you've made all your choices. You'll see that big button there, print. You left click on there one time and you'll print. So here's what we've described here. What I've, you'll see here what I said before, you can choose black and color is already chosen. Black and white's already chosen. Color, uh, you have to make that for your choice. Yeah, there you go, black and white. And then you print the custom range. You would choose one through four or six. Now you can, you have two choices when you print something. After you've, you've sent your print commands to the computer, to the printers, they don't automatically um, print out. You have to pay for them first, then they'll print out. You can do this one of two ways. You can come up, there's a monitor there to the left, that tall screen there with a the keyboard. You can, you can um, scan your library barcode. If you've got money credited to your card, you can choose what print job you want. You can log in, choose what print job you want and print it out for yourself. Here's a closer look at that. And here's where you put in your barcode, you'd put in your pin number, then you'd log on. You would highlight, you may send uh, seven or eight uh, print jobs to the printer, but you may decide you only want to print one. So you highlight the one you want, and that will be the only one that will print out. Uh, you'll see that when you've highlighted something, it will tell you how much it costs. You'll also see if you have a balance on your card. So if you hit print, it'll automatically deduct the cost of the print job from your balance. In this case, it would be 15 cents from 26.85, and then you'd have a new balance. Um, another thing to, rem or I just want to, to let you know, if you're having trouble with the, pr the printing, you would come up to our reference desk. Uh, here's an image of our reference desk. Uh, particularly the one on the right is a more current image. Uh, there's always one, should always be one reference library in there. Sometimes there's two. All you've got to do is come up and say, I'm, I'm having trouble printing. Give us your library card and we'll help you with the printing. Just remember every print job is linked to your, to your library card. So that's how we find your print job. Um, Another thing too, uh, warnings happen on your screen uh, because ultimately time runs out, whether you have a 15 minute courtesy pass or whether you have three hours, uh, you will get a warning uh, that says you have 10 minutes left. Another note is supposing you want to, you're, you've been on the computer for an hour and you decide you're hungry, you wanna get a bite to eat. Make sure you log off because that stops the clock from ticking. You come back and you'll have two hours left on the computer. So it's important always to log off. A, it erases everything you've done so other people can't see it. And B, it's, it, it allows you to have uh, more time on the computer for that particular day. Here's our way to close Word again. Just a reminder, it's simple, hit the X. And uh, this is how you log off, uh, where it says, please do not forget to log off. You would put your cursor in that bullseye there where it says log off and double left click. As I said, having trouble with your double left clicker, click one time, left click one time, and then hit the enter key and you'll be logged off. Uh, that's the end of our, our um, that's the end of our presentation today. And I know there are some challenges in a digital uh, presentation. Our, we formerly had uh, classes in which uh, we would have a teacher that could walk you through everything, but 
we're trying to make the best of the situation. And uh, please come in, use the computers, uh, ask a librarian. If you forget a step, ask a librarian. They'll help you uh, to rem remember this step. And then, then you can go on and keep practicing. Uh, I want to thank you for, for uh, attending our presentation. And we hope it was very, very helpful. Uh, you can come up to the librarian and sh he or she, most likely a she, they will be glad to help you get to the mousing tutorial at the Palm Beach Library website. So thank you again. And I hope that you stay healthy and stay happy. Thank you.